Hey everybody, welcome to part 3 in this antique VW radio repair and Bluetooth retrofit. If you missed part 2, I encourage you to click this link up in the top right, we'll take you to it. Last video kicked off with a nice quick musical montage that was an actual repair of the radio itself before we could continue with the project. Select a nice point to connect our voltage regulator. Tested out our regulator within the radio. Moved our power source to a presence off the circuit board. Came up with a wiring convention to incorporate our multiplexer. Digitized my voice and programmed it for tactile feedback on connection and disconnect of the Bluetooth itself. Find the proper location to tie in our MUX output within the radio circuit. Tested the MUX cutout by bypassing the AM. Seeing it latch back on on audio disconnect. Prepping the DAC for output signal connectivity to the MUX. Assembling our complete path with both inputs and one output. And finally tested the complete project with a cutover from AM to Bluetooth by running audio through it. In this chapter, we have to take this whole project and redesign everything to fit carefully in the small space in the back of the radio. We'll also find there are other challenges that didn't exist when the cabinet was opened. So there's a lot to cover. Let's get started. It took a bit to amass all the components I need to do this job. One issue is the cover. When it's closed, no Bluetooth signals getting through. I had to get a special ESP32. I'll show you right here. It has an internal antenna, but it also has an SMA adapter and this will allow an external antenna to be fixed to it. I'm going to have to install an external antenna on the chassis and move a zero ohm resistor in order to configure it. Here's the board that I'll be using for this project. I haven't yet cut it down to size. I'm just testing it for fitment. The actual chassis depth is 42 and a half millimeters. And I jumped into this using my old ESP32 pinout and this proved to be less than ideal. I didn't plan on using every pin on the board, only the ones that I was using for the circuit, as well as some outlying pins to stabilize the board and then I would pull out the pins that I wasn't using just pushing them through pulling them out the top this limits how much the ESP32 comes in contact with the circuit board and other components in the radio the same process was repeated on the other side and this board's ready to go so I thought a quick test to insert it and check the tolerance of the pins against the board. We're also well within the margins. The board was tacked in at two opposite locations while holding it firmly together. This looks flush. I'll just drop in one more for now. So I was doing a smoke test and I noticed <laughs> there was trouble when every time data was sent this green LED started turning on. I should have checked the pin out before I started working. Now I'm going to pay for it. So let's see what's going on here. So here's the Blink demo that they released for their board, the T7. If we look at the definition for the LED pin, we see that it's pin 19, and that's my MUX pin. So yeah, my fault for not looking. Looks like I'm going to have to move my MUX pin to another pin. So I moved to pin 18 in code and in the hardware, but the green light is still shining. Break out Arduino IDE so I could do some testing. I try every pin, and sure enough, it's pin 22. Not only do I have to make hardware adjustments, but now I'll have to specify config parameters because they're no longer default. Given the track record with these companies, I should have worked this stuff out before I touched the soldering iron. But now we're past all that, I'm starting to install the ground bus and the ground connections for the ESP32 as well as the DAC. We could see that right here. Followed by the 3.3 volts for the DAC coming off the ESP32. And now all the data lines for the DAC are installed. This is a good time to test what I've done so far. I can't use the headphone jack installed like such. So my connection is going to be suboptimal and probably a little noisy, but that's okay. Power worked. Very nice. Bluetooth connected. That kind of speaks for itself. We made USAA Bank and we can hear some sound Cassie. coming through, so She's all the wired all connections are good. USA. Bluetooth disconnected. Everything seems fine. I've cut out the voltage regulator and started replacing wires with pins. I've taped it to the board with a wire under it so I could get just the right amount of elevation. It's on the back of the board to cut down on possible noise. And here it is installed. Very nice, with three pins protruding from the other side. And I've wired it in now with one red wire on one side and the green ground off the main ground from the other, ready to test in the radio. I tested the five volt regulated voltage before attempting this, but you can see everything worked fine when turning on the radio. Now I started wiring the MUX. This is power and everything tied to ground. 
and now pin 18 wide into the three select lines. A quick check of muck switch over. Uh, Bluetooth connected. Planes. Bad gain sound feeds for an even longer Bluetooth disconnected. Switch from AM and back works good. Every single thing in the back of the chassis sticking out too far has been cut down like this screw. We could see here looking in the chassis, that screw has been cut down, including the face of this bolt has been cut down by over half, and this bracket not used in this radio has also been cut down. Used to stick out like that one. All this buys us a couple more millimeters that we need for clearance. Furthermore, I've cleaned off the back of the circuit board as we see here. I've left it on the edge of the circuit board for comparison. We can see them all sticking out. So now I started my first cut. It was a little conservative. I didn't want to cut off too much. So I'm going to clean it up once I'm sure of the size. Once in the radio, I determined to go down another row, so I did. And then I cleaned it up. And now I've marked the two areas where the notch is, and I'll make that cut. And this is what I believe to be the final shape. So I'm going to insert it, and then I'm going to put in the support bracket. I'm just going to lock it into place. With everything in place, as we see here, I can now get the distance from the hole to the edge of the radio. And we got 26.89 millimeters. I'll now scribe that mark into the chassis. Set it up with a punch. Drill it out with the pilot and then followed by the right size bit. After which I'll tap it for three millimeter. The bottom of the board will be held in by these brass standoffs. Screwed it in just a little on the inside because it's a pain to screw in just to check the height and the height looks good so I'll take it out now. Using a similar board I've screwed in one from the outside and I'm going to set up the center of the second hole using that board right here. I now have what I believe to be a centered hole. So I punch it. Then I drill it and I tap it. And we'll screw it in and we'll test it and we'll see how close I got. I could tell that I screwed in. I was just a hair off, so a little too far out, so I'm going to have to oval out both holes ever so slightly on my actual board, which I did, so there's no stress, and it fits just fine. Very nice. So now I've actually installed both of those standoffs in the case right here. It's one flat at a time, very hard to install, but I got it done. With all that work done, I got to retest everything, make sure everything's still working. You don't want to inadvertently break more than one wire at a time. It's going to cause problems, be terrible to troubleshoot. This is why I got to stop, reconnect everything, just make sure everything's still working fine. I'm satisfied though, so we could shut this down. And continue. Next part involves some microscopic surgery to move this resistor over to here, switching from the internal antenna over to the SMA connector. And I got this that I use for really small projects. I never do anything this small, and these tiny tweezers. So here I am in the full zoom, and this came off with no problem. And it is, every time you touch it, just flying everywhere. I managed to get it over there, and then it was gone. And I tried to pick it up, and then, then it was gone forever. It's gone. It's just a zero ohm resistor, I don't really need it. Instead, I got a thin as a hair copper wire that I soldered across both leads. We could see it just like that and now I'm just gonna test it make sure it works so we got a good reading across both leads and then just snip that tiny end and that's it good to go now I should be able to read it across the first lead and the center the tip of the connector and that's good so we're done I just snap in my lead for the antenna here's the other end the antenna for this is just a couple centimeters and it screws right on. Finished. So this onboard antenna is now disabled. Instead, we're running through this connector, through this cable, and out this antenna. So now align the board to the installation location by the notch. And just off to the side is room to mount my antenna. So I'll make my mark there and punch. I ended up using several bits to get to the right size. The wrench stops me from going through a circuit board. And from the outside, I test that the fitment is good. These screws were a monster to get in. I had to see them with long needle nose pliers. They also have a small fabric washer. Here's the one on the other side, but they're in now. The board is lined up perfectly as we see here. So now I'll drop the antenna lead in from the inside. This is secured with a plated star washer as well as a nut. Here's the mounting bracket. I've modified it. I shaved off this corner because it was really close to some electrical leads on the circuit board. 
and I've also made these two notches and those notches hold the new circuit board in place as I will demonstrate when I put it on. It is quite an exercise to line everything up top and bottom to get everything seated within all the notches. So I gotta line everything in a particular order, get everything straight, get the wires out of the way. And then once I do, I'm gonna get the original screw and holding it in position, I'm just gonna screw it in, hand tightened, and everything will be in place at that point. And here we go. And we could see how those notches hold that board into position. There's some rubber against the nut in the back that holds it in the other direction. And the original notches hold the other board in position, top and bottom. That hasn't changed at all. So both boards are secured. They're not touching each other. We can also see from the side that there's room. Everything's looking real good. I've reconnected all the connections. I'm going to be soldering now just to get an idea where everything's going. But first, I want to reconnect this yellow one that broke off early on in the series. That way I don't forget it. It has been a pain, this one. Now we could continue, and I'm just going to go one by one and connect them, heat shrink them, and whatnot. Now all the cables are connected. We can see here this one's tied to ground. Everything is good, except some of them going over the mounting bracket. So I'm going to remove the mounting bracket just to bring them under and put the mounting bracket back on. The only thing left sticking out at this point is the antenna. Brackets back on. All the cables are now addressed in their appropriate location. So the cabling portion of this project is now done. Everything is internalized into the radio. This was kind of expected. Shortfall mounting the ESP32 so close to the RF circuit. I also had a second choice right by the mechanical side here in the front right, but here's what we got. Fully mounted now, our signal to noise ratio is not so good. I had a plan for this in case this happened, so we're going to fix this now. First, a file will be used to shave all the sharp ends off of the circuit board. And that means every single sharp end off of this circuit board till it's smooth. After that, set out a length of heavy duty duct tape. And here I have copper tape for EMF shielding. I'm going to lay the copper tape with the copper facing the sticky side of the duct tape over one side, dressing to the bottom. So the copper shine that's a little longer will stick out one side, press everything together. And then I'll leave a small margin to connect stuff to if need be. The far side I'll fold over to insulate. I'll negotiate the shield into the unit to determine how much of it needs to be cut off. That'll be our end right there. It's cut to size now and seated to the bottom. I'll connect the tab and tie it to ground. We're going to demonstrate it by pulling this out because it's easier than trying to put it in to demonstrate it. Even if you don't see a train, stop. Trains can't. Paid for by Nitsa. For more information about contests on this station, go to 969thegame.com. Makes quite a difference. Reinstalled it, I further shielded the whole back section, and this will be overlapped by the cover when it's closed with the screws. The cover itself blocks out any noise that's in the room that's not even ESP32 related, or noise that could be coming from that external antenna fed back into the radio. That makes the front end even quieter. The only obvious change to the radio is a small antenna coming out the back. Currently have the small antenna connection going into the AM for any further demonstrations. Now the cover is closed. they're going to do it because it's a business i'm just saying we can fight back and that concludes this custom bluetooth installation into an antique vw sapphire 9 radio this has been a great project i hope you enjoyed it as much as i did do me a favor click that like button down below helps me out a lot when you do and hit that subscribe button for more videos like this when they come out again i hope you enjoyed this video thanks for watching Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply? <laughs>